Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our first, I'm gonna say first, AMA uh, here at the Everdome team. We've got with us our new CEO, Jeremy Lopez. Uh, I'm gonna sort of give you guys a brief overview of how this is gonna play out. I know folks are still trickling in and that's okay. This will be recorded again in the event that anybody has to leave early or misses a part for whatever reason. So uh, first of all, my name is Samir. Hello, everyone. I am the the most recent uh, marketing and growth manager. I came on board with Everdome uh, about a couple of months now, and it's been an incredible ride thus far. Um, I was previously a regular contributor at BSC News. And that's actually just a, a quick side story here. That's how I first met Jeremy. Uh, I was doing a story on Everdome. I've been following Everdome essentially since its inception. And when I first met Jeremy, we were supposed to have what was supposed to be, I think, about a 20 minute conversation. Jeremy, you can correct me if I'm wrong here. But uh, that 20 minute conversation turned into, I think, almost an hour and a half. And you can imagine a COO is extremely busy. But uh, Jeremy was kind enough to, to give me that extra time because we ended up talking about Web3, the metaverse, crypto in general. And one of the things that I think is really going to come across both in this AMA and going forward is your understanding just of what type of person jeremy is and and how open he is to to wanting to 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 really make the community feel like you are part of this entire process now in terms of how the actual conversation will go so we have been taking your questions across our channels now for a number of days and what we've done initially to get things going is created a couple of central themes that we're going to cover um, and while that's happening, as questions may come to your mind, as they naturally do, feel free to drop them in the, the conversation here. And our mods, our wonderful mods, will be feeding them to me. And from there, we'll be uh, posing those to Jeremy, uh, just so that we can try to keep this uh, as efficient as possible and trying to get to as much questions as possible. We're going to be looking at some of the most important and impactful pieces here around Everdome and the future. Uh, specifically around Rob's exit, Everdome's growth in the near term, our product thus far, what the future holds for Everdome, uh, as well as just uh, general metaverse conversation pieces. So without further ado, I'm just going to quickly turn it over to our new CEO, Jeremy Lopez. Hey everybody, uh, Jeremy here. Samir, that was a fantastic introduction. I think that phone call that you said was only an hour and a half actually was about six to nine months. <laughs> and now <laughs> yeah. they're they're happening on a daily basis. So um, it's exciting are. to see it's exciting to see the journey that we've had together from the early discussions, just uh, you know about the general uh, Web three environment to what we're trying to do together today. So it's it's really exciting guys to to get to sit down with you. Um I see people, you know, coming in 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 good numbers. So I'm really excited to sit down and have a conversation with you. Um I I hope that in the part that we've kind of pulled together, we're going to be able to answer a lot of the the pressing questions going forward. But at the end, like this isn't going to be the last AMA. We're going to try it in different settings and different setups across different platforms. Uh, I'll be in um, Telegram as well, chatting with everybody. You know, I I like to communicate. Um, I, I enjoy, um, you know, being open and, and transparent about what we're doing. I love feedback. Look, we don't have all the answers at the end of the day. What we're building here with Everdome is a very progressive, you know, cutting edge technology that doesn't have any blueprint for it going forward. And so it's going to it's going to take everybody together the team the community and and every aspect that we can pull together partners you know one of the uh, one of the sayings that i say all the time is you know the metaverse uh, can't be done without collaboration and so that's something that i stand by and something i stick by and that's why we have such a big focus on partnerships and such because it's going to take everybody to pull together to be able to achieve the type of um project and vision and expectations that we've set for ourselves so 
I won't get into that too far. I'll, I'll go ahead and start answering some questions. I'll let Samir take it back over. But uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm here. You guys can reach out to me. Uh, I'll be in Telegram. Amazing. So, Jeremy, one of the things that you just referenced on was the, the challenge of building such a, a large scale endeavor, which is the perfect segue to the very first question here. Why have you specifically taken up this challenge to lead Everdome? Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's a it's a challenge that I was uh, I was asked to take up and do. And it's something that being being with Everdome from the very beginning, um, you know, I've I've been there from the very first days of putting pen to paper and, and putting the white paper together to where we are now. So. I've I've spent a lot of time thinking about not only this role, but the the entire ecosystem, the Web3 ecosystem, the Everdome product, metaverses in general. And it kind of all brought me to the to, to the solution that or the, the the understanding that what we're doing here is quite unique. It's something that I take a lot of pride in. Um, it's something that hasn't been done exactly the way that we're doing it before so i like that adventure kind of mentality but one of the biggest things and one of the reasons i wanted to take it on is i love challenges there's nothing easy about what we're doing you know we're constantly running into hurdles um that we're having to jump over leap around get over i love a challenge i love the tech that web3 brings the opportunities maybe even just as much as the tech that Web3 brings. So we're starting to look at how people communicate differently, how people interact, how people transact. You know, I've spent 15 to 20 years as a Web3, mar- or excuse me, as a Web2 marketer, um, both on, on startup side as well as a few larger organizations. And so it's really exciting to see how Web3 is kind of, you know, either you could say flipping it on its head or taking it inside mm-hmm. out. And they're starting to put a lot of ownership in the hands of, the individuals that are using it. And for me, that's something that's really exciting. It's something that's terrifying as well, but that's that's the kind of challenge that I look for. You know, on top of that, uh, it's also really exciting. There's quite a few members from the team that I have built with, I have been building with for the past these 10 plus years on, on various different projects. So it's exciting to be able to come back together and do this as a team, as well as, you know, new faces, new talents, and be able to try to achieve something that, uh, you know, hasn't been done yet. So speaking of new, when a new CEO comes into an organization, whether it's in the in the traditional space or Web3, there's generally a, a shift in vision, if at all. Can you maybe share what what folks in our community can expect from your vision for the project? Absolutely. And, you know, this this ties back to what I said before, being from the very beginning of the project, being part of creating the vision. One thing I can say is the overarching vision of Everdome is going to remain the same. Like we believe that delivering this hyper-realistic experience is something that is fundamental to um, Everdome's future, to its use case, to what we want to try to do, what we want to try to achieve. I love going into Everdome and seeing the difference between going into another metaverse experience. It's really important for me that we we stick to the overarching um, a vision and we continue to push forward with that. Some of the things that will change though, are how we're gonna deliver that, some of the milestones that we're gonna be looking at and some of the timelines that we're gonna be looking at. Like I said before, this vision is very big. And in order to achieve that, we have to take a step back and we have to start breaking it off into bite-sized ch- bite chunks, whereas we can really focus on different aspects of the business in different time periods to be able to hit that larger theme. And when I say that, I know it's 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 kind of grandiose sounding, but I'm talking of right now, our major focus is gonna be really heavily reliant on the product. We need to make sure that we can get a proof of concept out. And I'm not just talking about the ecosystem. What we've delivered now, is really kind of the the shell of the game, the beautiful aspect, the place where it can live. But what we need to start doing now is we need to start delivering one on the economy, two on, uh, you know, and excuse me, through the economy, we can deliver something, you know, as basic or as complex as a play to earn game. And these are things that we're looking at right now. So how can we actually mm-hmm. engage the economy? How can the users, how can the community come in and show proof of concept for an economy that's been created? And that's, you know, through play to earn. So those are a couple of things that we're going to be looking at. We're also very, very excited to be able to try to, and I know 
Um, this, this is a question that's come up quite a few times, but when are we going to open this to the public? That's also something that's very high on my radar as to when we're going to be able to open this up to, to more than just the NFT holders, because at that point, we're going to have a, a proof of concept model that has been tested by the community. That's why it's so important for us for uh, you know, anyone that gets alpha beta access to give us feedback in real time. That's why we're OK sharing things that will break, because it's very important that we get that feedback loop very quickly and then we can move on so that when we roll it out to the open public, we're kind of humming along. We have an ecosystem. We have a you know, we have a play to earn game that can work. We have an event space that's in there where people can come in and socialize. They can interact with one another. But even more so, people will be able to spend money to to earn money. Uh, just general transactions to prove the 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 whole metaverse concept and uh, how valuable it can be for the future. Yeah. So obviously, with the future in mind and everything, we have to to take a step backwards and go into the past. Here, Rob was obviously such an integral force in this whole project. Now, a lot of the questions that we received from the community was around the reasoning behind his departure, but also the manner in which it was communicated. Can you share a little bit of insight on that? Yeah. And, you know, I've seen these questions and they popped up when I was in Telegram the other day as well. Look, at the end of the day, um, Rob has to make his decisions for himself. And I am also of the feeling and, you know, how he's going to execute these feelings. And so I also would have appreciated um, a different path to how that was transferred to the community and to the to the public. But this decision in the end is Rob's and Rob's alone. And while he made this decision quite quickly to step back as CEO, we did have a longer time plan in mind as to how this transaction was, tran transition was going to happen. But in the end, Rob made the decision to step back quite quickly. And, you know, that's his decision in the end and something that we as a community have to live with, we as a team have to live with and something that he has to live with. At the end of the day, I choose to look at it as he is the founder and the initial visionary that set Everdome on the path that it's on now. And I want, I for one, am grateful that this Everdome, the community, the product, the project, everything exists today. And we've been given an opportunity to take something that's been created and take it to a new level. And so that's one thing that I call on the community and everybody involved to, to, to maybe take a look at that. I'm not asking you to think the way that I think, but this is what we've talked about in the team as well. Is like, he stepped down, he's gone, he's out of the project. We have something here that is very valuable. What are we gonna do with it? How are we gonna move it forward? And what do we need to do to make this happen? The opportunity is here for us. It's, it's up to us to take advantage of it. And on what terms did Rob leave Everdome? Specifically, can you speak to his allocation of dome and what happened there? Absolutely. So, um, so as Rob stepped away, he did leave a portion of his initial investment um, for development runway going forward. He also left his allocation in the hands of the Everbone, Everdome team, Everdome team, excuse me. And this is, you know, quite simply said, Rob is not a dome token holder anymore. Everdome has access, has, has all of his allocation um, in our hands. And so he is completely out of the project. Um, he, 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 he looks at it on, on from the sidelines and, you know, he's a, he's a cheerleader for the cause. But at this time, he has made the decision to step back to unplug and to live his life in a very personal fashion. So when you reference the term runway, we're talking obviously about the viability of the project over the long term. And there's been genuine interest in better understanding how Everdome's financial picture shapes up. Specifically, we have Gem Digital as a strategic par partner, and perhaps you can maybe share some insight on that front. Yeah. So when it comes to the funding of the project, you know, you know, I'll be completely open and transparent about this because, you know, we're all in this together. So when we're looking at the funding of the project, everyone knows we brought on Jim as uh, uh, as an investment partner. And I can go into a little bit more about how that is set up and how the deal works with Jim. But in terms of runway for the project, so we're looking at and it's one, it's important to keep in mind that Everdome, whether it's a crypto project or a project that works on the fiat ecosystem, is a startup project. So we're constantly looking for new ways to fund the project. 
um, especially given, you know, the past year's market conditions. But I can I can comfortably say that at this point we have runway development runway for anywhere between nine and 12 months. And we in, in addition to that, we also have the, the backing of our partners at GEM. And so I, I guess I'll just kind of leap into that, because one of the, the things that I've seen a lot is, you know, how is the partnership with GEM? How does it work? We work with Jim on what's called a token subscription deal, a uh, token subscription facility. And what that means is that they provide us funds in exchange for tokens at a time and place that we choose. So from the beginning, our announcement was Jim committed $10 million to Everdome. And from that time, we have been able to access those funds at the time that we choose so that it's the most optimistic or mm, maybe at the best usable time for Everdome, I guess is the words that I'm looking for, I apologize. Um, and so if, if we need to pull down funds for say a big marketing activity, or we're looking at a new feature set for the, for the product and we need to expand on the development team through one of our partners, that would be a time that we would pull down additional funds. Now, these funds are protected in, in, through, through contracts and such in a way that we can choose to not sell any of the tokens below a certain price threshold so that it doesn't go low. And then we also have things in place that only allow them to sell a certain number of tokens over a certain time period. So there are some lock-ins when it comes to that. At the end of the day, I think it's very important. And as I watch the feedback and everything, it's very important to understand that, you know, Jim as a financial backing partner is in the same boat as the rest of us. They only create success when we do as a company. So it's really important to know that we're kind of all in the same boat here when it comes to uh, the success of Everdome. Gotcha. Uh, basically on an as needed basis by the sounds of it. Is yeah, we... I guess that, that's a much simpler and easier way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so... I was trying to give as much detail as possible. <laughs> No, listen, details are good. I'm sure the community appreciates the details. And that's the, the whole part of this uh, process of transparency and engagement with our community is ensuring that they have the details that we're able to share with them. Now, I want to slightly shift, but not too much here. Jam Digital obviously is a strategic partner. One of the other partnerships that we have that we're very proud of is the partnership with the Alfa Romeo team. Now, we have received a number of questions on that front, and I'm going to quote one specific community member because this question was very pointed. What is the point of a, and I quote, useless F1 relationship other than making connections? What do you say to that? Yeah, so, well, I <laughs> I like the question because it answers itself in the question as, as well. Um, so making connections is very important, especially when you're a, par a partnership driven organization. So we have our core product and we have our partnership division, which focuses on bringing in partnerships that can one, either drive revenue through the ecosystem once the economy is set up or two, they have a reach which will help bring visibility to Everdome, and to be honest, the wider Web3 ecosystem. And this is something that we get in spades with a sport, an amazing team from that sport that has a reach of what, 1.6 billion views. Um, I think it's the most watched sport in the world. If you're a football fan, if you're a football fan, I apologize, but I think F1's <laughs> way up there at the top. Um, but, you know, other than making the connections and uh, other than having that reach and that that brand association with with a phenomenal team like Alfa Romeo and in, 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 in the, the F1 circuit, there comes um, some alignment that we see as very comparable. And that's one of the things that we spoke with Alpha in, in detail about the fact that they are such a, a detailed engineering company that I mean, when you build a race car, the, the intricacies and the, the engineering knowledge that goes into creating these amazing machines is something that we on some level associate with when we're building Everdome, the level of detail that we're putting together into our metaverse spec, uh, um, specifications and how it's experienced and everything. Now I'm not saying it's the same experience to walk into Everdome as it is to stand next to an F1 car as it starts up because Everdome doesn't about knock you down. <laughs> but at the end of the day, uh, the the brand alignment is really important for us. And that's not just with Alfa Romeo, but with all the partnerships that we're lining up. And so, 
you know, there's so many different reasons that working with F1 is great, but I think one of the biggest ones other than the connections is the, the use case. How can we take someone that has a vision that's similar to ours in their respective industry and bring it into the metaverse? For at the Because at the end of the day, that's a lot of what we're trying to do in this field and in, in, in the metaverse. We're trying to take things that we can find in real life and we can put them into a digital environment and not necessarily right. recreate them, but maybe even make them, you know, different. One so, can even say better. From these sort of connections or these events through F1, can you speak to maybe some of the partnerships that have come about from it? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so so making connections, like we said, up there at the very top, uh, you know, we we ended up closing the, the OKX partnership at one of the Grand Prix um, in Miami. We ended up building the relationship and, with Jim. Uh, also at the same Grand Prix in Miami. So we have already seen a lot of return, a lot of benefits from partnering in this field, and they just continue to come in. So it's it's really a great place for us to spend time and to, to, to spend resources. Yeah. I want to shift now to, to product. One of the, the central questions that we've seen quite a bit of is would the current experience or will the current experiences be getting updates in terms of bug fixing, textures, overall engine upgrades and so forth? Absolutely. Look, um, it doesn't matter if you're building in web one, two or three, like the name of the game is to iterate. It's to create in our case marvelous beautiful experiences which we understand that sometimes when we launch them or when we test them they're going to have some breaks they're going to have some bugs and so the name of the game is to iterate and to rebuild and to upgrade and to to make these experiences stronger um with that said we do have to prioritize where we're going to spend the majority of our time or where how we're going to break up the difference in the time between say bug fixing to get things perfect because we do have a lot of perfectionists in our team, which is good, um, or looking at new experiences. So it, it's really that uh, that sweet spot of, do we continue to build new experiences or do we just keep improving, improving, improving the, the experiences that we've already launched? So okay. um, yeah, I mean, we will always be upgrading, always be fixing, but at the same time, we have to look to the, to the new frontier of new opportunities that are out there as well. So from, a, you know, there's obviously our community members consist of people who've been with us since the very beginning and some of whom may have just recently joined the community. Maybe you can describe who the target audience of Everdome is. Yeah, so the, the target audience is, I guess you have to look at it in different phases of the business. So I know there's a lot of companies out there, especially in our industry, that are saying they want mass adoption. They're looking to reach everybody. And one can say that our partnership with Alfa Romeo might have that same mentality in it. I wouldn't say that's necessarily the case in the short term. So in the short term, we're really looking to build a product for the people that is right in front of. Our target audience in the first position is the community. What can we build for the community that is going to not only one make you proud, but make you interested in using it? Like what what is it that 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 Everdome as a as a as a team can deliver that the community is really going to engage with because i fully believe that once people find something that they like it spreads like wildfire so they're going to be the ones that are going to be out there sharing it and pushing it further um they're going to be you know the community is going to be a massive part of our marketing efforts going forward um but Outside of that, it's it, we're really going to be focused, uh, you know, uh, initially on the people that can get in there and understand the product the best. So it's going to be the the gaming uh, industry. It's going to be the crypto industry. It's going to be the people that uh, understand it and can really get in there and test it and kind of give us feedback that yes, this is this is a product that works. This is a product that I like. And as we go on to different phases of the business, those target audiences are going to start to spread. Uh, as many of you know, we, we have six districts in Everdome, so you can kind of already get a vision of some of the audiences that we think will be great for targeting as we move on, not only for partnerships, but for users and use cases um, and, you know, kind of across the board. Everdome positions itself as a hyper-realistic project. Now, one of the questions that we've gotten was to what degree will Everdome adhere to real scientific principles in its metaverse? Will we, for example, see anything along the lines of bending rules, perhaps, to allow more 
interesting environments or games inside the space. Are you trying to say that science isn't interesting, Samir? <laughs> Not my words. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Look, I think this is a. I think this, in the end, will be a question for product dev and, to be quite honest, the community. So up until this point, we have been building what we call near science type experiences. A lot of what we're building has to tie to, you know, real life science and mechanics. But some of the things that we're looking to do, obviously, we don't want to hold them back. We also want to create a project of hope that expands beyond what we know we can do now. So as many of you have heard, the, the story behind Everdome is that it's set in the future, you know, 150 years, the near future, because we want to walk that line of what's possible and then kind of where it starts to get very science fiction type so that people can relate to the product a little better. So it's not so far, far, so far fetched that it, 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 it can't be relatable. But I think we're starting to get to a point now where, and this could be a question that, that our devs will be asking the community is like, what, what would you, where would you like to see us break some of the rules? Where's a, where's a place that we could possibly create a little more, I won't, I won't say fun because science can be fun too. <laughs> My background's in a lot of science, by the way, guys. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I will definitely be asking the community where we're at with that. But the, the idea has always been that it's not going to be strict science. There's going to be some, some rule bending when it comes to that. Okay. Is there an event plan for tier three Genesis NFT holders? The short answer is yes. Um, we're in the testing phase right now and we will be giving dates. There are no official dates that I can give at this time, um, but we are in the testing phase, so. Okay. What about landholders? Any updates you can share there? Um, so landholders uh, is gonna be, so that's gonna be part of the, the vision when I, when I talked about reordering um, timelines and the priorities of what we're gonna be doing. It's very important for us right now that we get the core product up and out so once we've been able to do that, and I'm talking about the economy, I'm talking about the, the, for example, a play to earn game, some mechanics that can be reused throughout the rest of the game. Once we have stuff like that, then it'll be much easier for us to be able to parlay and use those things in different parts of the uh, of the business, i.e. for, for landholders. So it, it's definitely on the list, but delivering the core game is of the priority right now. Super focus has to be the name of the game so that we can start delivering and start start moving forward. Because I, I said this earlier, I'm gonna say it again and again and again and again. At the end of the day, we are a business. We want this to be a cool experience. We want it to be amazing, but we have to deliver. We have to start generating revenue in a way. And to be able to do that, we need to make sure that we are focused on the things that will deliver users engagement. Okay. And speaking of delivering user engagement, Oh, some of the questions we received are around opening up Everdome to general public access. Do you have an estimate on anything like that? <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I could poke on somebody else from the dev team right here to to take the brunt of this, but I will. I will speak out and say, um, look, this is a goal. It's not something that I can guarantee. It's not something that should be written down as a contract, but the goal is to be able to open up to the public with limited access. And when I say limited access, I mean it can't just go completely open because scaling is a major part of what we can do in UA, UEE5 and it's something that we constantly have to watch. But we're looking at Q4 as a time to be able to open to the public in a, in a limited scope. Okay. Now I'm gonna shift just slightly back towards the, the NFT piece here. We had a lot of questions about NFTs and I understand that this may require coming back to in a separate conversation piece, but can you maybe speak to the general utility and benefits plan for Genesis NFT holders? Yeah, and, and I have seen this question quite a bit too, and that's, that's one thing that um, we've been in discussions and actually this last week we've been in discussions about. So there's quite a list of things for tier one, tier two, and tier three NFT holders that come as benefits for holding holding the the token and so these are things that we're constantly striving to be able to implement inside um everyday 
you know, processes. Now it's going to take a little bit of time. Obviously a lot of this is going to be tied, especially the big one. When you start looking at the 1% for each tier in terms of the rev share, this is, this has always been the plan to tie it to the economy um, and how we'll be able to pay that out to the different tier holders. So this is something that is going to be closely tied to the economy. The rest of the stuff, you know, giving alpha access, beta access, we've already sent out a couple of uh, offers for people to come to the, the Mars facility in Northern Poland to get to experience that for tier one. Um, but overall, yeah, I mean, it's, it's gonna take time to be able to implement all those because it, a lot of them are tied to the product. So as we roll that out, we will be implementing those features um, those benefits for holding the the nfts okay. anything you can reveal related to the economical structure of everdome's metaverse uh at this at this time no like i said this is something that's been in the works for roughly three months it's very important for us to 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 be open about that like we have to make sure that this this economy is simple yet efficient and runs in a way that is beneficial for everyone involved and so the mechanics that go behind this are something that personally i can't get into i'm not a game designer so talking exactly about how that works um but what i can tell you is this is something that we are putting a lot of attention on is right at the top of the list and so this is something that we will be able to share with you guys you know coming okay uh, a lot of questions around uh, the dome token, specifically around the maximum number of tokens in circulation. What can you speak to that? Yeah, so the uh, the maximum number of tokens in circulation right now, um, to my best knowledge, as of the last couple of weeks, you know, CMC is is up to date. Uh, we don't have any intentions. In fact, we do our everything to try to keep our circulating supply as low as possible and i i i uh i want to be very clear that this was created as a utility token so in order for us to start looking at how can we get more tokens in circulation that really comes with us opening it up to the public so once people can actually start using the token start transacting we have a lot larger user base that's when we can start looking at how we can start putting more tokens in circulation but for right now yeah, the goal is to keep the, the, the circulating supply as low as possible. So is there anything that you can speak to in relation to token burning around the circulating supply? That's uh, that, that was another question we got. Quite that actually good. might be one of the hottest questions of, of, of the entire AMA. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we, we were definitely discussing different ways that we can do that. That's another question we're going to probably put out to the community that we are going to put out to the community is some ideas of how you would like to see the token be burned. Right now, we're doing everything manually. So as you know, for the for the land sale, we did a, a pretty sizable token burn from all the profits. I think it was between 18 and 19 million dollars worth of dome at the time. Um, some other individuals, partners have also burned their tokens. We have an exciting token burn coming up soon and i won't say any more about that but uh there's uh, definitely some 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 ways that we're trying to figure out how to you know burn more tokens but again this is this is one thing and i'm not i'm not trying to placate it or put it off as uh, I, I don't want to come up with a solution i want to hear it from the community i want to hear what you guys would like to do so we can have some ideas of how we can get this done but it's very important for me to, to, to remind everyone it is a utility token. So at the end of the day, we're going to need this token inside of Everdome. Okay. So I'm going to hit you with a couple Sorry, of... Sorry, I ended that kind of abruptly. It sounded like I was going to continue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the thing cut out. If you've got more to say, please Yeah, no, that, that was it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to hit you with a couple of quick questions here. One, will, there be, will the dome staking leaderboard be a thing again? Yeah, so that this was asked to me the other day in Telegram as well. And um, look, I, the, the beautiful thing is I, I hear everybody really likes the competitions and they like to compete. So that's something that we can definitely look at. There's, I, I'll be honest with you, there's no plan as to implement it or how to use it again right now. But it's there, it's built. It's, uh, it's something that we can pull out and we can use when we have a project or a, a feature that we want to tie it to. But there are no there, there are no plans as of right now to to reuse that. OK, second question here in this quick fire section is going to be around AI, which is a key buzzword everywhere you look. There's conversations around AI and the use case for AI and how AI will take over the world, essentially. 
Where do you see AI in the metaverse and Everdome and so forth? Yeah, so like you said, AI is a, a fantastic buzzword right now. It's something that everybody is talking about. Everybody's searching through using for marketing activities. It, it has a lot of use cases and it has a lot of use cases for a business like ours. I, I mean, I was having a conversation the other day with the team and just we were throwing around some ideas and there's a remarkable amount of things that we could do. It's really about how we're going to implement them. So, you know, AI for, for the metaverse, obviously it can go all the way down to helping us with, with coding. It can manage and run uh, NPCs inside Everdome so that you have some kind of interaction with the, you know, with an NPC inside there. There's a lot of different ideas that we've been playing with. There's nothing that we have nailed down as of right now, because again, there's those four major functionalities that we're really focused on, but AI is definitely going to find its way into the metaverse. And it's going to be a big, big market that it's bringing with it. So it'll be really exciting to see how we can implement AI in Everdome. Okay. What are the next steps in terms of priority um, in product development, let's say, after the Mars landing, Tier 3 access? What comes next? Yeah. So as I've alluded to a few times, you know, the economy is right up at the top. Um, ways that we can show the economy, such as a play to earn game, or that we can get some kind of concept or s some kind of throughput on the economy with, with play to earn. Scaling is one that I'm going to always be bringing up because it's a major one for us. We're also going to be looking at how we can use entertainment areas. I know we did a survey in the past on Discord, and a lot of people said, you know, we want to use the metaverse for entertainment. So we've we've been speaking with people for the last year already about how to bring entertainment into the, into Everdome. So that's something that we're going to be looking at a lot closer. And then the last one, as I had referred to before, is opening to the public. So getting what we have by Q4 out to as many people as possible. Yeah. What does a finished product look like to Jeremy? When, when will you be satisfied that we've achieved our targets? This is, this is one of those gargantuan questions that I have to <laughs> break up into pieces. Because if I sat down and I had this, con this conversation with, uh, with Dave, with our, our, our head of content, and he, uh, we, <laughs> we got into it and he said, Jeremy, that's, that's, that's crazy. But at the end of the day, it's... Uh, it's never finished. I look at the, the potential in the metaverse as something that replicates real life, replicates society. We're constantly building, we're constantly changing. There's new ideas coming in. This is a, you know, a digital version of real life in some way. So it's, it's never finished. But for me, if I'm looking at like milestones, like that milestone of getting that proof of concept out to allow as many people to try it, to give us feedback, to show us if what we've done and you know, the, at that point, hopefully two, two plus years work is validated from there. That's a jumping off point where I can step back and say, okay, this is when I will be happy, which by the way, is tough to do because <laughs> I'm, I'm quite picky when it comes to, to, to <laughs> final, final products. But, uh, I think there's a, there's a lot that we can do in that way, but it's really about keeping our heads down and focused on the short-term goals before we start looking too far, f far into the future. Gotcha. Okay. Jeremy, thank you for, for answering these sort of central theme questions. Now I'm going to, I'm going to hit you with a couple of the ones that we've seen sort of spring up just now as you've been speaking. And let's start with an easy one. Uh, we have one here from, I'm just pulling it up. One, Johnny Bravo asks, do you speak Polish? I, <laughs> I don't speak Polish. Are you learning? I know one word in Polish and that's smacznego, which means like, um, what's the Italian version? Bon appetit or French, bon appetit. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I lived, I lived, I lived in Poland for two years when we were building Codewise. I, um, I was very lazy with that language. My second language is actually a shocker. I'm not going to give it away yet. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it to the community to guess. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you, one community member has asked if you can share a little bit of insight as to the time 
at CodeWise actually with Rob? Like, is that sort of the the history before um, Everdome? Yeah, I mean, look, um, coming coming from man, when was it? It was probably around 2010 when we started building together, 2011. And it was really focused on web two marketing tooling. Um, you know, CodeWise has built, I'm going to have to call CodeWise and tell them I was doing marketing for them. Uh, CodeWise built a, an affiliate tracking platform as well as a, an ad network for businesses and affiliates to, you know, drive traffic and promotions and such. And look, that was a company that, that started quite quickly and got, you know, got very large. And, you know, I think it was 2013 and 2014 when I was, when I was there as COO, uh, CodeWise was named as the, the fastest growing company or second fastest growing company in Europe two years in a row. And a lot of that had to do with the network that was created as well as the, the tooling and the team that we brought together. And, you know, we have quite a few people on this team that are from those CodeWise days. And there's a lot of trust there. There's a lot of um, experience that we have together. And so that's that's one of going back to the very first question that we asked. That's one of the things that's exciting about building here at Everdome is there has been some past successes. There has been, you know, an understanding between team members. Tim, Timi, Isa, I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm butchering some of these names. I'm sorry, guys. So Timmy Isa asks, what inspires and motivates you the most? And what is the most challenging aspect of being the CEO? Honestly, this uh, this question is a question that I've I've really had to dive into in the last what ten days, but I, I've quickly uncovered I guess something about myself I've always known. But delivering for the people around me is something that has always been like a kind of a fire starter for me. Something that that gets me out of bed in the morning, gets me going. Like I said before, I like I like a challenge. I like when uh, my back's up against it and I like to be able to work with people that I enjoy working with. Um, and I think that ties in largely to the community because whether, whether you guys see it or not, like your, your messages, your words are heard all the way across our team inside now across the internet. And so it's something that's taken on board and it's something that, that I notice every single day. So you know, delivering for the team, delivering for the community, delivering for my family. Like that's, that's what drives me. That's what gets me going. And that's what, if we're kind of looking back at it, like what's deep inside, that, that's the answer that I would give at the end of the day. It's, it's about the people. That's a, that's a great answer. I like that one. Um, TMA asks, what are Everdome's plans for, for further partnerships? Yeah, this is a, this is a tricky question because I obviously can't give anything away, but I can say, you know, our head of our, our, our chief growth officer, Arthur is, um, he's an absolute delight <laughs> we we travel quite a bit together and to see him out there working like it, the the guy really gets in he gets he he he's so talented at really building relationships with people you know across the world and so we always have a list of people that we're speaking to at any one time about trying to find that that sweet spot of how we can work together now the list is big but as i had said before it's really important for us that our visions are aligned, that we are all on the same page and that there's actual value delivery for both sides. We're not looking to do any partnerships that are strictly, you know, just for the sake of doing a partnership. We want to make sure that there's value creation for both sides. So, you know, I can't go into any details about any partnerships that we're talking with or anything like that, but I can tell you it's, it's, a, it's a big part of our business and it's something that we quite enjoy doing. Yeah. Speaking of partnerships, Legbite asks, are there any talks about connecting or implementing Hero again? At this time, there's no talks um, about implementing Hero's, uh, Hero, I, I assume, is he talking about the Meta token Hero. or the technology? 
Uh, either way, either way, question. I'll answer both. Yeah. So, in terms of the token, no, uh, Dome token is the is the only token that's going to exist inside the Everdome ecosystem. In terms of the technology, um, you know, it's it's MetaHeroes and it's an amazing project. The, the the scanning capabilities that they have are really cool. You know, it was really fun to work on that project to kick it off. But there are a lot of opportunities out there for scanning projects, other scanning projects, and you have to think about placements as well. So there's some things that we've done with other partners in different location, and it's really about location for us. So if we can get access to them for scans, then it's always a possibility. But we're not limiting ourselves to, you know, which partners we'll be working with. Okay. Uh, Altcoin Daxer, I hope I pronounced that correctly, asks about exchanges. Will there be any exchange deals announced in the coming months? I can't, I can't answer that. Look, we're always in conversations. We're always positioning the business in the best way possible. Um, so, you know, it, it's always a possibility. Uh, I'm not going to say yes. I'm not going to say no. Those are the kind of things that we like to save. Okay. When it comes to this, like I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. I'm happy to talk about the strategy of it and kind of how we, how we look at these opportunities. But uh, I, I won't be, unless, unless you guys trick me somehow, I won't be giving away anything um, that hasn't been announced just yet. Okay. Um, let's see here. What do we got? What is the OKX metaverse and do we have anything to do with it? This is a question by Cryptor. Um, the OKX metaverse... Uh, so our partnership with OKX is we'll be building a, a metaverse experience inside of Everdome with OKX. But if you're talking about what's been going around on social media right now, um, that's something that they have done with. Um, I, I, I assume I'm putting words in your mouth, but the, there's a different metaverse experience that they have put out with a different partner. But there's always opportunities in the future. Always opportunities in the future. Always opportunities um, in the future. A, I like that one. Let's quote that one. Um, Lingua Franca X asks, when do the astral suits go live? Ooh, that's a good question. That's something I actually, first of all, I, Lingua Franca, I think I've seen this name on Twitter or somewhere in the community. Um, and if you're the same person I'm thinking of, love your support big fan I, I i like to see the support behind everdome and everything that we're doing so if you're the same one i really appreciate it um no i don't have an answer to that right now that's something that i i would have to come back and, and give you information on i i just don't have anything right now there's a lot of stuff that, that that i'm still circling around still trying to get a hand on handle on that was not in my purview before so these there's some things that i won't be able to give you the answer on just yet um obviously with this with this changeover everything happened quite quickly uh and so it's 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 a lot of everdome type movement where we uh we we pick up and we keep running okay um i have a question for you here obviously everdome right now is a uh, a desktop or a laptop a web-based product is there any plans or do you have any visions for it being something that can be used on your mobile device yeah that's a question we get a lot and look to the, the straight answer is it really depends on the technology and the speed in which you know something like U, ue5 could be hosted on 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 a mobile phone i mean you know the limitations that are there it's quite a powerful engine but there are aspects of the game that have been discussed that could be moved to web. And it's something that, you know, this could be something else that we could put out there that could have like a web two kind of element to it that would allow people still to participate in it without actually having to use the UE5 engine. So these are some things that we've also discussed. Okay. Uh, on the topic of the Unreal Engine 5, Vikram asks, Unreal Engine 5's MetaHuman is getting a new update called Animator. Can you implement it into Everdome? MetaHuman's absolute fire. I, I, I love the product. I love the way they're delivering it. Um, that's not something I can speak to, though, to be honest. That would be a dev side question as to 
how we could do that, if it would work, what timelines. Um, that it's not something I can dir directly answer for you, but it is something that I have had an eye on, and I really like what they're doing with it. Okay. Uh, another question from Timicia. Really sorry again if I'm mispronouncing your name. What is your strategy, Jeremy, on the creation of Everdome's economy? So this is kind of a two-part question. So what's your strategy on the creation of Everdome's economy? And the second question is, are you inspired to, or is there an inspiration behind emulating a successful product similar to World of Warcraft, for example? So the first part of the question I can't actually get into because I would be N not i would be giving you information that's not completely formed that is not completely finalized um and the decisions haven't entirely been made on it what i can tell you for the second part of the question is that yes we we do look to other um games other types of economies in the industry that are successful that work well that have positive feedback as inspiration okay um, Mino Forino asks, when do you plan to use the fees collected from OpenSea to buy back and burn? Soon. <laughs> Very cryptic soon. <laughs> Voice just got deeper a little bit, spoke closer into the mic. <laughs> All right. Um, Altcoin asks, let's talk a little bit about the dome price. Uh, is that the question? Uh, that seems more open-ended. So perhaps maybe you can just share some of your thoughts. Yeah. There. So look, I'll, I'll start, I'll start off with the same, uh, the same answer that our, that our moderators like to give. Uh, and I'm not doing this to, to, to make fun or anything like that, but token price is not something that we, we openly discuss. And there's many reasons around that. Um, one, it can always be construed as financial advice. It can, you know, there's a lot of different things that we just don't want to put ourselves in that situation to, to, to have to discuss that. But two, I'm a firm believer in, and this is, I think actually in one of Samir's interviews with BSC, we had this conversation because he asked me the same question and I'm a firm believer that product, obviously product comes before, you know, the launch, the rise. And I, I, I live by saying, you know, build it and they will come. If any of you are baseball fans and you've seen Field of Dreams, um, once we get the product out, I, I firmly believe if you have a good product, everything positive on the backside of it will follow. And that's something that I've always, you know, maybe it's the 20 years I've spent working with developers <laughs> that I, I've, I've had that mentality put into me, but it's, it seemed to work throughout my career and through different different uh, you know businesses that i've seen grow and such and so it's really important that we focus on the product once we have that up and going everything else sh hopefully if if the market likes it will follow okay v team v asks how many people left everdome with rob um no nobody left with rob uh, I know one of the questions that asked one of the people that asked a question in the Telegram group was, uh, "How big is the team? How many people are inside Everdome?" Look, we work uh, the way that our the way that our company is structured. We have uh, it's roughly around fifteen core team members, and we've always worked with development partners, one, two, three different development partners. And the major reason that we have done this is it allows us to scale. Depending on what part of the product that we're gonna be building, it allows us to scale up or down in terms of how many people that we need to do that. Nobody has left the company because Rob left the company. Okay. And uh, on the topic of personnel, Juan wants to know, is Everdome still hiring? I think, you know, look, Everdome has a solid team right now. But Everdome is always, always looking for talent to fill roles that we need uh, experience and talent in. Um, I, I would never say we're not hiring and I would never say we are hiring. As uh, needs come up, we, we are always looking to, to fill them with people from anywhere. Okay, just looking through here. 
Uh, okay, here's a, a question here. What forms of marketing is being sort of planned and utilized for for the promotional phase of of this project? And can you speak to maybe the time horizons? Yeah. So you know, having having a hand in marketing myself, uh, obviously. There's many different things that we can look at. We've been looking at traditional advertising. We've been, you know, there's always the route that we can take where we look at influencer marketing. There's a lot of different opportunities that we have within our purview that we have either used in the past or that we could possibly use in the future. Right now, um, we know what we can do on the marketing side. We know when we can pull the trigger. But right now, the focus, and I'll go back to this and I'll keep saying this, the focus is going to be on the product. And so we're going to be focusing on that. When it comes to the marketing side, you know, a lot of us have experience um, for the last 15 to 20 years on the marketing side. So mm-hmm. that is not a part of our business that like we have to really develop. It's something that we really need to just when the time comes, if the time is right, we can start looking at how we can use the resources that we have to, you know, start turning up the the marketing. But as you guys know, a lot of what we do is we, we, we spend a lot of time around the world. We do a lot of speaking engagements. Uh, you know, we've done exhibitions in the past. You know, we, we've, we've even been talking about um, not only sponsoring, but exhibiting at other events. Then we have, you know, traditional advertising. Then we have community marketing. And I think this is, I, I alluded to it earlier, but community marketing is probably the best form of marketing that we have. Everything else is, you know, mostly paid. And if you're a marketer, you know what the return on investment for paid marketing is versus word of mouth or referral. So the best marketing plan that we could put together would start at the top, number one, with the community, and then work its way down to the other um, mediums of marketing. And I think, Jeremy, uh, to add to that point, I think this is ultimately where the community has such power to play such an integral role in the, in the growth of Everdome as a whole. Absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you anymore. Okay. So we're, we're running up on our, on our time here. Um, I wanted to just really briefly say thank you to, to all the community members for, for sitting in on this conversation and giving us the, the space to, uh, to, to share this information. And really trust in us when we say that we're going to deliver more of these, that we're, we're really working towards building out the engagement, the transparency, the communications and and all these things. And I'm going to bring it right back to the top of this conversation where when I first had my conversation with Jeremy while I was at BSC News, um, you're right, Jeremy, when you say that it ended up becoming a six to eight month long conversation because I was so uh, impressed with sort of the willingness and the candidness of having these authentic conversations. And I believe personally that that has come through again today. And I'm hoping that the community here can see that and uh, and gives you the credit where it's due here. But I'm going to turn it over to you really quickly for any final thoughts or comments. And then uh, stay tuned, everybody, for, for what comes afterwards. Amazing. And Samir, thank you for taking the time um, to, to jump in here and, and do the AMA with me. Guys, I know there's a lot of questions uh, that you might still have answers to or new questions or just overall feedback. Like, give it to us. Let us know. We're here. We're, we're going to keep building. We're going to move forward. Um, it's a new day for Everdome. And I'm really excited that we do have a supportive community like you all. So I, I just want to say one more time, I appreciate everyone uh, for all your feedback, for your support of Everdome, for, for being here today. And, you know, let's, let's, let's move forward. Let's take Everdome to new heights. Amazing. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Thank you, everybody in the community. Thank you, moderators, for helping out with the, the questions. And uh, we'll chat again soon, everyone. Have a, a wonderful rest of your day.